Previously, I've introduced the idea of symbolic reasoning architectures and, more specifically, deductive reasoning architectures. The key idea of these being that an agent has an explicitly represented symbolic model of its environment and that it makes decisions about what action to perform via explicit reasoning with this model, explicit symbolic reasoning. And in its purest expression, the idea that that internal model is a logical representation, it's a bunch of logical formulas, and that the decision about what action to perform is made via explicit logical reasoning, deductive reasoning. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is just introduce uh, a particular uh, programming language which is based on this idea, and the programming language is called Agent Zero. Uh, and Agent Zero uh, is interesting for a number of reasons. It was introduced in 1990 by Yoav Schoen, uh, and it was the first what was, uh, what was called agent-oriented programming language. That is, it was the first programming language which was explicitly developed for programming agents. So that was the first item of novelty. The second item of novelty uh, is that Schoen said it was, a, it was based on a new programming paradigm based on a societal view of computation. That is, that computation would be done by societies of agents working with each other. And then the final, and in some sense the most interesting uh, aspect of it, is that it takes seriously the idea of the intentional stance. So you'll recall the intentional stance, the idea of the intentional stance, is that we characterise the behaviour of agents uh, and explain and predict the behaviour of agents by attributing to the mental states, things like beliefs and desires, and then assume that they will act rationally to try and accomplish their desires given their beliefs. And as we will see, uh, Agent Zero takes this idea very, very seriously and actually has within the language itself things like beliefs and commitments. So, um, what do you have to do to program an agent in Agent Zero? Well, you have to give it four things. The first thing you give it is a set of capabilities. So capabilities in Agent Zero are basically exactly the actions that we've been talking about. And in fact, when you program an Agent Zero agent, you encode the capabilities as subroutines, essentially, or methods in, in the language. So an agent has a set of capabilities which are basically actions that it can perform. An agent has a set of initial beliefs, so these initial beliefs just describe to the agent what it thinks the world looks like when it starts executing. So the agent's initial beliefs just describe the initial state of the environment to the agent. Then next it has a set of what are called commitments, and these are things that the agent will do. And in Agent Zero, commitments roughly take the form of a schedule. They say, at this particular time, do this particular action. Okay? And initially, an agent starts off with a bunch of these commitments, which just tell it what it's initially committed to doing. And then finally, the, 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 the program part of an agent uh, is encoded in what are called commitment rules. So we previously saw, when we talked about deductive reasoning architectures, that we would encode a logical theory of the optimal action to perform, and that manifests itself in Agent Zero. That logical theory manifests itself in the form of what are called commitment rules. So what these commitment rules do is they tell an agent how to generate new commitments. So that's the key aspect. The, the program part of an agent in Agent Zero is really those commitment rules. So let's look at what those commitment rules uh, 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 look like. Well, like all rules, a commitment rule has a left-hand side and a right-hand side, and on the left-hand side of the commitment rule is a condition, which is made up of two parts. It's made up of a message condition and a mental condition. Now, the idea is the message condition is a condition which matches against the messages that the agent has received. So agents in Agent Zero can send one another messages, and the message condition matches against those messages that it has received. The mental condition matches against the agent's beliefs, the beliefs that it currently has, that internal representation that it has of its environment. So that's the left-hand side, message condition and mental condition, and then the right-hand side is just an action part. It typically says, okay, in that case, become committed to do this action, at this particular time. 
So uh, a commitment rule consists of those things, and, and the program for an agent is a, basically a bunch of commitment rules. So each decision cycle, each time our agent zero agent goes around its decision cycle, where it has to decide what to do, is it takes each rule in turn and looks to see whether the message condition matches against the messages it's received, whether the mental condition matches against its mental state, its beliefs, and if those two things match, then we say the rule fires, and the right-hand side of that rule becomes a commitment for the agent, typically. So, um, let's say a little bit more detail about what the actions in Agent Zero might be. Well, basically there are two types of actions that are allowed in Agent Zero. They can be either what are called private actions. So this is like uh, an object in an object-oriented programming language executing a, a, a private method, something which is internal to itself. It's exactly that idea, just executing an internal subroutine, which you as the Agent Zero programmer have to provide. Or alternatively, as we've already seen, Agent Zero agents can send messages, so we also have communicative messages. And these messages are constrained to be one of three types. Either requests, so the idea of an agent requesting another agent to do something. Unrequests, saying, I no longer want you to do this. Or inform messages, where you say, I want you to take on board this belief. So the way one agent gets another agent to do something is with a request message. The way that it gets another agent to change its beliefs is through an inform message. So you'll remember, again, from previous videos and from earlier parts of the book, there is no notion of method invocation in the agent world. We think about agents as requesting and informing one another of various things. Okay. Here's an example, a slightly stylized example of a commitment rule, but it's only slightly stylized. So here is the commitment rule. Uh, here is the left-hand side of the commitment rule. So these are, this is the condition part, and then this at the bottom is the action part. So what does this rule say? Well, firstly, here is the message condition, and it says that if a particular agent has requested me to do a particular action at a particular time, okay, so if that's a message that I've received, and here, agent, time, and action are variables which will match against the actual name of the agent, the time at which it actually asked you to do it, and the actual action. Okay? So that's the message condition. If a particular agent has requested me to do a particular action at a particular time, then this is the mental condition. So the B here stands for beliefs. So we've got explicit representations of beliefs within this rule. So it's taking seriously this idea of the intentional stance. So if I believe that currently this agent is my friend, and I believe that I have myself the capability to do that action, so that's one of the repertoire of actions that are available to me, and it's not the case that at the time that I'm requested to do that action, I'm already committed to doing any other action, Okay, then what I do is I take on board this commitment. I commit on behalf of myself to do that action at that particular time. So, to paraphrase, if some particular agent asks me to do something at some time, I believe that that agent is a friend, I believe that I have the capability to do it, and I don't believe that I'm committed to doing something else at the time that it wants me to do that action, then I will take on that particular commitment. So what that means is that this commitment to do this action at this particular time essentially gets added to the schedule of actions that the agent has. And the schedule is just a list of times and corresponding actions. And then the, the actual decision about what to do at any given moment just involves looking at your schedule and seeing what you're supposed to be doing at that particular time. So this is a trivial example, but it at least illustrates, I hope, how these commitment rules work, how you generate these new commitments. And the agent is continually generating and expediting, carrying out those commitments that it's, that it's generated. And you should be able to see uh, in, that it's not too difficult to build up societies of agents that can communicate and cooperate with one another. So agent zero then. The idea in agent zero, a societal model of computation, takes seriously the intentional stance, the idea of programming agents in terms of uh, beliefs and commitments, things like that. To program one of these things, you define a number of commitment rules, which are, in agent zero, the analog of the theory of rational action, which defines what the rational thing for our agent to do is at any given moment.